Hi, everybody, and um, apologies uh, to Jeremy. That uh, was a fascinating presentation. And um, maybe one thing that we can do is during the discussion, um, we can incorporate that in, in as one of the topics. Um, it's going to be very hard to follow <laughs> that one, but uh, here we are. So, um, um, thanks so much, so much, everybody, for your interest in collaborative initiatives for application profiles development. I'm Paloma Graciani Picardo, Metadata Librarian at the Harry Ransom Center, University of Texas at Austin. Uh, and for the past year and a half, I have had the good fortune of collaborating with Nancy Lorimer, Head of Metadata Department at Stanford University, as co-chair of the LD4P Profiles Affinity Group, um, which has been a great learning opportunity. Uh, so today I'm here with Nancy to talk about the work the work of our group developing linked data templates for a community of users, um, share some of our challenges and accomplishments, and discuss plans for the future. Um, did I went to the next? No. Okay, so um, these are the different topics that we are going to be covering. Uh, first, um, I ran through like a very quick introduction. Uh, so everybody can get familiar with the project um, and then we will get into the meat and potatoes of the presentation, which is the LD4P profiles in Synopia. And then Nancy will talk about profiles reduce and interoperability um, and also next steps. So for those in the room that are not familiar with the Linked Data for Production project, um, and probably there's not many now because that's what like a bunch of the presentations before us have been uh, discussing. Uh, this is a melon funded initiative um, to shift the cataloging community workflows to ones rooted on linked data. Um, Jeremy was talking earlier a little bit about some of the deliverables of the phase two, which has just um, brought up uh, uh, one of them being developing this uh, cloud-based RDF cataloging environment, which is Synopia. And um, another of the initiatives was the creation of a court of libraries. So uh, there were a number of libraries working with the project partners. Um, the LD4P Profiles Working Group was created at the beginning of 2019 with the, cha the charge of establishing best practices for how the core will create, edit, and share profiles with, within Synopia, and for storing and accessing profiles in GitHub. And um, at that point, the working group um, had representatives from 12 different institutions. Uh, by June 2019, when the charge was finished, uh, the group had created training documentation for the profile editor, best practices, um, for profiles uh, in a shared in a shared environment, um, naming conventions, reducing other profiles, etc. It's what these best practices um, cover. Uh, centralized repository for profiles in GitHub was also um, developed uh, by this working group. Uh, since the interest in collaborative work on profiles continue between the charts, the group morph into an affinity group. So as an affinity group, um, as an affinity group, new members within the court joined the group and um, new goals were added. So development of common profiles and resource templates in Synopia, which uh, we normally refer to as base profiles, support for core members de developing their own templates, individual projects, um, discussion forum for issues in modeling, um, technical problems, etc., uh, tutoring, mentoring, brainstorming, and um, finally, practical feedback to developers and um, the designer of the user interface. So 
Working collaboratively on profile development requires a significant effort and compromise, so why bother? Well, the development of a set uh, of base profiles has allowed us to address general cataloging needs uh, and also serve as basis for local uh, specialized profiles. And uh, Nancy will be talking more about interoperability later. Uh, the group works, uh, work builds up on everyone's skill set and expertise levels. Uh, it encourages the community-based practices. Um, and then um, the group discussions about profiles implementation allows for an homogeneous and informed feedback to the Sinopia developers. Uh, so let's see, the LD4P templates, which I already mentioned, where are the base profiles, are a starter set of resource templates based on Library of Congress B-Frame editor profiles. Um, the group has edited these templates, uh, the LC templates, to accommodate Sinopia's data model. The way that uh, we approached this, we started with the monographs profile, uh, then implemented modeling decisions to other format-based templates uh, to, assure, um, to assure consistency. The base profiles are available to the public on a GitHub repository within the LD4P space, and um, there is a, a link on this slide. Uh, you can download the slides from this scale, um, this, this session in a scale. Um, and then um, these are the, dif the different uh, formats that are currently covered. And then here you can see a catalogers view in the Sinopia Link Data Editor for one of these templates. Uh, many of you have already seen it, uh, Ben show another, um, another screenshot earlier. So, this is the actual JSON, which again, um, Jeremy has already been uh, showing in the presentation earlier, but I just wanted to, um, to show it here to, go, to run through some of the um, basic components of the profile. So here the profile wraps uh, one or more resource templates. Uh, and the resource templates are the reusable piece of the profile. So you can reference to a resource template uh, from another profile. The resource templates includes a class URI, a human readable label, a template ID, uh, which is the one that is used for referencing from one refer resource template to another resource template. Um, And then additional meta metadata, like author of the template, date, uh, remarks, or guidelines for use, and the JSON schema that is built upon. And then one or more property templates. The property templates also include a property URI, a human readable label, a property type, which can be lookup, uh, resource, or literal, cardinality information, like require, repeatable, and then value constraints. Um, so, some of the, um, in addition to B-frame and general purpose ontologies such as RD and DFS, the LD4P The LD4P templates also use B-frame ontology extensions that were developed during the phase uh, one of the grants, such as the art and rare materials extension and the perform music ontology. And the guidelines within the templates um, refer to the current version of RDA, uh, but there is going to be work, uh, there is ongoing work in updating format specific templates to accommodate community content standards, such as uh, DCRM for the rare materials template. And then this um, is the last one of the introductory slides. Um, here are uh, all the link open data vocabularies that are currently available for lookup in Sinopia. Uh, Sinopia lookups use the question authority service, which 
uh, Jeremy was already talking about in, in the earlier presentation developed by the Cornell uh, University team. Um, I'm not going to get into much detail here, but um, just to mention that this is a growing list and new vocabularies can be requested by profile wranglers and eventually added to the question authority server. So, um, when I'm reading about a case study, I'm always looking at learning more about specific logistics and challenges, the unanswered questions, and this is what in this section of the presentation it's going to be about. Well, a very brief version of it. So, um, modeling questions. We have had a lot of discussions regarding modeling questions. So, nested versus unnested resource templates. Uh, the resource template model assumes that you can embed a resource template with it and other resource template ad infinitum. So in this model, uh, this model allows to create descriptions that integrate all different levels of abstraction of the description of library materials, the uh, Ferber Wemi, um, as a series of nested templates. Um, the workflow is easier for the cataloger who doesn't have to deal with creating multiple metadata records for the same resource. However, nesting templates in this way, uh, what it does, it proliferates blank nodes and it makes it harder to link resources on the manifestation on item level. Currently, Synopia is not minting URIs for resources described, with, described within a nested template. Uh, on the other hand, reducing um, a resource template is also more complicated within the nested model. An alternative uh, for this, uh, that we have been experimenting with is the nested model where each level of abstraction corresponds to an standalone resource template that links to each other through the, um, through the um, resource URI. Uh, this reflects more accurately the wave of distributed data that is assumed on linked data, uh, enables resource template reuse, but the workflow can be very cumbersome um, for catalogers that need to do a lot of URI, copy paste, uh, making sure that everything is linked properly. Um, the use of lookups has also brought up relevant questions regarding how much metadata um, uh, to retrieve from the external source to keep within the RDF discuss, um, description. And currently um, in Synopia, URI and label are being kept within the RDF description, but uh, should be also be keeping other metadata that will uh, eventually facilitate local discovery or rely on APIs to retrieve contextual metadata as needed. Um, finally, also fair to admit that um, the opportunity for data reuse and mappings might also influence modeling decisions, as it is the case with the B frame to mark conversion. Workflows. Um, technical considerations have also influenced modeling decisions. For instance, the Synopia data model, um, which uh, doesn't allow to repeat property URIs within the same um, resource template, uh, meaning that you cannot have different property templates that share the same property URI within the resource template. You can have a property template being repeatable, but that's, that's a different thing. Um, this is the same case with uh, using the same class URI for different resource templates that are referenced from the same property. Um, these are issues that came up when we were working on the Library of Congress templates and that it required modeling workarounds to make them work on Synopia. Synopia doesn't support currently uh, profile version co control, although feedback has already been provided to the developers and the profiles group is discussing best practices. Um, again, some of the questions, what should be the granularity of the version, a profile, a resource template, uh, and then what constitutes a new version and a release? Finally, although Synopia offers profile validation against a JSON schema, there is not a way to validate an RDA file against a given profile. Uh, and the next one very quickly before Nancy takes over the virtual stage, talk about more exciting topics. <laughs> um, I'm just going to run very, very quick about um, maintenance workflows. We have um, a project on the LD4P templates um, um, 
repository where um, everybody can um, open an issue with the profiles or make a request for announcement. Uh, however, only four people are currently working directly with the templates. Uh, and we also have to be aware of uh, all the different places where the profiles live um, so that they are in sync when we are doing this update. And now I pass the, um, the mic to you, Nancy. Okay, thank you, Paloma. Um, and just remind you that you are changing slides for me. So if you could move to the next slide. Thanks. So Paloma is just giving you a broad overview of the work of the Profiles Affinity Group over the last couple of years and its work in the development of profiles for use by a community of catalogers. Um, I know we're, we're running all a little over time, so I will try to keep this a little shorter, but I'm do my best. So I'm going to dig a little deeper into one aspect that greatly affects our application files and will affect any other template developed for metadata creation as linked data. That's metadata reuse and interoperability. Could you switch please? So what do we mean by the reuse of metadata? Um, in a general form like this. Librarians create metadata for materials acquired by their institutions, but no library um, has a completely unique set of materials. We all have a large overlap in our collections. In North America, we have exploited that overlap in cataloging, sharing our bibliographic data with other libraries. Cooperative cataloging, as it is known here, is basic to our work and relies on the reuse of others cataloging data for local use. So cooperative metadata creation also saves a lot of time and effort and also reinforces the goals of standards building and general uniformity of data, even though it's been carried out by a large number of catalogers dispersed over a continent and rather what our, our communal meta uh, profiles in Sanofi are like. Because this type of reuse presupposes a certain amount of interoperability among the data models in which we are actually creating our metadata. Next, please. Next, next please. So there are two primary models for reusing data. In the first model, we find data we want, we copy it and save it to the local repository. Uh, I, Jeremy showed you this. Within that repository, we can add enhancements or otherwise change the data. This model is familiar to North American catalogers. It's generally what we use in the MARC environment for copy cataloging. There are advantages in this model. May, main one being that no one but you can change your local data. You can enhance, correct, fine-tune data easily for local use, and all your data driving your discovery for your users is stored and indexed in one place. On the other hand, you cannot benefit from enhancements made from others, and they cannot benefit from yours unless there is some kind of a continuous update protocol between repositories. Um, the duplication of the data when you copy it um, results in more work for reconciliation engines if you're actually sharing your data out. You also need to stay, store more data locally, which is really a, can be a big issue. So next slide. In the uh, second model, instead of loading the data into your local repository, you simply link to it whenever possible. This model tends to be what most people think of when they think of linked data. There is no copying, no or little local storage. Any enhancements need to be done in the source repository and follow that repository's guidelines. Again, uh, I think you go back one, please. Yes. Uh, you benefit from the enhancements done by others and you store less data locally and your data is dynamic by nature. It can be continually updated. The drawbacks is you have less control over what is done with your data and to use externally stored data for local use, it must be pulled in on the fly from the external repository. And I will say taking from the advantages and disadvantages, your di data is dynamic in nature, which is not always what you want it to be. Uh, next slide, please. The two models are not mutually exclusive. Synopia, as you saw in Jeremy's talk, currently uses the first model to bring in full work and instance descriptions from Casalini's share virtual discovery environment and from Discogs, um, a sound recording is uh, 
page. In this case, Sinopia loads all of the description, all of the properties associated with that particular entity and any linked work or instance entities into a template chosen by the cataloger. Any data that does not fit is not loaded. The data is copied and stored locally. For value vocabulary, such as VIAF or LCNAF, however, we have lookups powered by questioning authority. Um, a successful lookup loads only the URI and label of entity. We rely on the link to eventually connect us to any other information about that entity. So that follows model two. So we actually use both models in Snopia. Next slide, please. But of course, um, Loading data into Synopia is only part of the equation. Eventually we want to export data from Synopia as well, or it's not much use. While possible exports are infinite, we are concentrating at this time on two particular requirements. This is mainly for the new grant. First, we need to convert bib frame data to MARC. This may seem strange to many of you, but many of us will still require MARC data for local system operations, holdings, circulations, etc., cetera, for, for some time to come. Uh, the only converter available at the moment is from the Library of Congress, though there has been some experimentation around by other institutions. The LC converter is heavily dependent on matching to an expected shape of the RDF data, and the output of the LC editor and Ansonopia are not exactly the same. This is a challenge. We are also intending to send Sinopia data to share VDE for reconciliation to be part of a broader database. Part of this work includes the formation of a PCC data pool in the near future, which is part of the LD4P3 grant work. Since ShareVDE is a bib frame repository, this sounds simple on the face of it, but up to now ShareVDE has been bringing in MARC data and converting it to bib frame, not bib frame directly. We already have challenges loading ShareVDE data into Snopia, as Jeremy showed you, but will we have the same difficulties going in the other direction? Next slide. So why do we have these challenges with these two goals? It all comes down to interoperability. There is an inherent looseness to the bib frame model, which may result in different shapes in modeling entities. For instance, the most bib frame properties are associated with classes that can act as a range for the vocabulary, but in most cases are not necessary or required. Whether one uses this class or not changes the shape of the resultant RDF, and this in fact affects interoperability with both the bib frame to mark converter and with share VDE. Beyond that, share VDE, there is data not included in Synopia templates, and while that sh itself shouldn't be a problem, at times it may affect the loading of other data. Share VDE also replaces all the bib frame blank nodes with the URIs. This is in itself creates its challenges with interoperability when used with Synopia, which unless we aggressively, aggressively unnest the templates, use as blank nodes. The obvious solution of optimizing a template to fit a specific repository's data model has its own drawbacks. In catering to one, you may find your data is completely incompatible with another. Finally, there's that big right elephant in the room. We do not yet have a standardized way to represent RDA in bib frame as yet. And so there may be different interpretations of that as well. Next, please. So this brings me back to the primary reason for being and the primary focus of the affinity group at first, a recognition of a need for shared practice in our case through shared profiles. Interoperability is easiest with similar modeling of data. We do need some standardization of the modeling of core bib frame classes and relationships, at least for now in these early years. This does not preclude the use of any extension to bib frame or addition of any other data, but there does seem to be a core to be is necessary for collaborative cataloging. It also again lessens the workload. With our, with our, um, our templates, every cataloger does not have to create every profile from scratch, but can use the profiles we provide and add what they need. But to fulfill um, this standardization, linked data editors should ideally produce as much as possible the same RDF within the bib frame for framework, possibly with options to produce it with blank, either with blank nodes or with URIs in the place of the blank nodes. Best practices for template creation and those developing linked data editors need to be standardized and recorded in form of meta formal metadata application profiles or maps. 
And finally, more training and creation of these maps, template creation and analysis, the output of templates based on best practices is really needed. Next slide. So how are we going forward with this? Next slide. The Profiles Affinity Group um, that we've been talking about will continue beyond LD for P2 with hopefully technical infrastructure support from LD4 in the future. Uh, membership is open to any interested person. You don't have to be in any of the LD for P or PCC or anything like that. And the group will continue to discuss modeling and best practices while also developing profiles based on individual needs and adapting to improvements coming to Sinopia in the next year. The group will also continue its relationship with the rare materials and serials affinity groups. Uh, the profiles group, however, is not a standards body, though we sincerely intend to affect any standards created. So for this, we are looking to the program for cooperative cataloging, PCC, a group to which all the original cohort institutions belong. In response, the PCC has created a number of task groups to work on Sinopia and the PCC environment. Next slide. The PCC task group on metadata application profiles, while broader than just Sinopia, has laid the groundwork for PCC work in developing maps and subsequent templates based on profiles. Um, and the report for that was just submitted in May. Um, secondly, there is, uh, we have two new task groups. Uh, the first is a PCC task group to support expansion of PCC cataloging in Sinopia which will provide a retrospective of the experiences of the LD for P2 cohort from the PCC perspective, and second, to formulate a plan to expand PCC cataloging in Sinopia. This will bring more experimentation and exploration of Sinopia and help improve our decision making. Second, the task group on PCC Sinopia application profiles is charged with developing a set of Sinopia application profiles for the PCC community equivalent to the BIBCO and CONSER standard records. Uh, maps for mark monograph and serial records, respectively. This group will take up issues of interoperability and best practices in the creation of these profiles based on the experiences of the profiles affinity group and PCC's long experience in standards creation and maintenance. And it turns out that Paloma and I are also co-chairs of that group, task group. So the Profiles Affinity Group in collaboration with PCC, LC, and ShareVD will continue working toward the goals of best practice development, standardization, and greater interoperability of our data. In turn, this will help move us all to the larger goal of collaborative cataloging in a linked data environment. Next slide. So here are our, our um, our email addresses if you want to contact us, the LD for Slack, for Slack, LD4 Slack channel. And before we leave, I just want to give a shout out to all the members of the Profiles Affinity Group and their amazing work over the last couple of years. Long may it continue. Thank you. And I suspect we're a little over, but we will try to move over to questions. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Paloma. And uh, looking at the questions here, maybe we could take one and then we are switching gear to discussion. Um, so let's take a quick look of the questions that um, already on the Google Doc. If, let's see. <laughs> um, I think. Am I sharing it the right? Uh, you right were here? sharing it. Yeah, that's it. So there is one question for the time being. Um, you could take this, one of you, Paloma or Nancy. You want to go for that, Nancy? <laughs> um, training in metadata application profiles. Well, first, I think people have to understand what metadata pro application profiles are. Um, I think there's many levels of training in it. Um, it's just starting with creating spreadsheets that um, fill out your application profile and what is needed in that application pro profile for people to make use of it. Um, once you get beyond that, um, it would be great if more librarians had um, some knowledge of Shackle and Shex and uh, other ways of, and, ability to validate their profiles and so forth. Um, I can't really say more than that just at the moment. It's uh, an open question. 
um, the report of the MAPS uh, task group, of which I was on, um, will be published in the near future, I'm pretty sure. Um, and that has a little bit more about it in there. Okay, 